So, got a message there. It's all typed up and ready to go. But, it's not going to be preached this morning. And, and I know uh, I said last week that we were going to delve into Anna is having a good time today. Um, I know that uh, last week we, we started talking about the in-between, being in-between. And we looked at Philippians chapter 3, verses 11 through 15, and the Apostle Paul talking to us about that in-between place. Okay? And we will get back to that. Um, and, and actually, where the Lord is leading this morning, I believe, you'll see someone who is in between. In the in-between. Has an opportunity to grow. Has an opportunity to mature. Has an opportunity to um, do some uh, great things for the kingdom as well. Um, if he takes that opportunity. Okay. So the book of Second Kings... Chapter 6, verse 8, starting at verse 8. Second Kings, chapter 6, starting at verse 8. As you're, as you're flipping there, how many of you have trials? Everyone here does. Okay. How many of you, when you're in those trials, feel like you're surrounded? <clears throat> you're all alone. No one else around. No one else can. No one else can know what you're experiencing. No one else can know how you're feeling because no one else is going through what you're going through. And people come up to you and they say, "Oh, I, I know how you're feeling." No, you don't know how I'm feeling because let sit down, let me tell you how I'm feeling. You got about two hours, I'll be glad to tell you how I'm feeling. And they say, Well, that's okay, I've got to go change the oil in my car. Um, and off they go. But you just feel like you're all alone. It's great. Trial is surrounding you almost to the point that you're sinking. You're, you're struggling to keep your head afloat. Ever been there? Maybe you're there right now. <laughs> There's something in here in this passage that I think uh, will minister to us uh, and encourage us as we face trials. Okay? Um, I believe it goes right along with what we've been studying and dealing with let it go. I believe it goes right along with what we've been studying with the in-between. Thinking of today. What's today? What's the Lord want to do today? Got to let go of the past. And I, yes, I'm, re I'm reaching for the things uh, that, are above, that are ahead of me. But what is today? What's going on today? What does the Lord want to do in my life Today, okay. So we're looking at Second Kings, chapter six, starting at verse eight. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, "In such and such a place shall be my camp." I love that battle plan, don't you? In such and such a place. Well, where are you going to put camp? Oh, in such and such a place. You never find that on the map. Um, I guess it depends on who you talk to and what kind of map you're looking at, but over in such and such a place. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware, if thou pass not such a place. Well, the man of God knew where such and such a place was, didn't he? 
Okay. Um, but he's warning the king of Israel. And he says, don't go to that such a place. For thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to that place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was in trouble. So, prophet, we're talking about Elisha, is the prophet. God gives him some insight as to where the enemy is coming and where the enemy is going to be. The enemy is going to be at such and such a place. And, uh, and so he goes and tells the king of Israel. He says, don't go down to such and such a place because if you go down to such and such a place, you're going to be in trouble. There's going to be problems. And so the, the king of Israel says, or the king of Syria goes down, or the king of Israel goes, sends a, a spy down to see what's going on, and sh they don't go there, not once, not twice, but every time. And the Syrians go to attack, no one's there. That's because they went to much and much a place rather than such and such a place. Um, all right, it, scripture doesn't say that. I added that, sorry. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will you sh not show me which of us is for the king of Israel. So he's got his war cabinet together, and he says, look, we've gone down there, we've, got, we've tried to defeat them, we've tried to go against them, and every time we go against them, they're not there. They're somewhere else. So which one of you is a spy? Which one of you is telling them what's going on? Huh. Okay. One of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. It wasn't like he was going to go have him over for dinner. That isn't what the king of Syria had in mind. Um, he wanted to. He wanted to. Uh, anyway, he wanted to take care of him. And it was told him, saying, "Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore, sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about." And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, the host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. Now that would be something to see without your coffee first thing. <laughs> Go to bed, no enemy there, everything is peaceful. You've had a nice evening by the fire, looking up at the stars, enjoying the evening, talking with the prophet, talking with the man of God, getting some insight, getting, getting some uh, knowledge, getting some wisdom from the Lord and, and what the man of God had to say. And you go to bed and you sleep this peaceful sleep. And you get up in the morning and you walk out to go get the newspaper and whoa, wait a minute. And this servant runs back into the house and he says, oh, no, we're in trouble. There are all these chariots out there and there's this army out there and this, there's, we're, we're going to be slaughtered. And they've come for, what are we going to do? Oh, remember that trial that you've been in? Remember that trial that you're dealing with? 
that great host of army that surrounds you, you feel like you're all alone, you feel like there's no hope, you feel like there's no, no ray of sunshine out there. You feel like you're being swallowed up. And, and uh, uh, there are many times when we get into that situation that we, we come running back into the house and we go, oh no, what are we going to do? And so we start stressing and we start worrying and then we start feeling ill. So we go to the doctor and get some pills and we start stressing. We start worrying. So we eat extra food and that extra piece of pie. And so we start stressing and we start worrying and we post on Facebook Hey, I need some help. I don't know what I'm going to do in this situation. Can you give me some advice? And so we start stressing. We start worrying because this great army has surrounded us. This trial is so big. This trial is so large. I can't handle this. You know, maybe, maybe it's... Uh, Maybe it's something that, that you walked into the doctor's office and the doctor said, oh, well, I've got some bad news for you. Maybe it's uh, you went to your job and your, jo your boss comes in and he says, I've got some bad news for you. We love you. We love the work that you do. However, there's cutbacks. And you got to go. Overwhelmed. Now what am I going to do? How are we going to figure this out? I got bills to pay. I got kids to take care of. I got to put food on the table. What am I going to do? How am I going to handle this? And the army is there, ready to slaughter you. The man of God comes out and he says, Oh, now calm down. He prays and he says, Lord, open his eyes that he might see. And his eyes were opened. And there was another army there. That army was greater than the army that surrounded the prophet. Whereas the army that surrounded the prophet was in chariots, this army that the servant couldn't see, neither could the Syrians actually, but the servant couldn't see had flaming chariots. There was great power in this army. You see, one of the things that you have to remember when you're in the midst of that trial and you feel overwhelmed and you're sinking low is that you may be surrounded, but you're surrounded by something bigger than what you're surrounded with. As a believer, as a child of God, you may be surrounded by the things of this world. You may be surrounded by the pressures of this world. You may be surrounded by the trials of this world. But there is something bigger, something greater that is surrounding those pressures and those trials that is ready to take them out. All we have to do is open our eyes. Have the Lord open our eyes so that we can see and see it. Do you see it? Lord, open our eyes. Maybe that's, our, maybe that's what needs to be our prayer. Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. You know, I know that, that leadership is, is concerned about uh, uh, our church finances, and our church finances are not the best right now. One reason or another. And we can get all focused on that. What are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? Who oh, no. Post it on Facebook. Do a GoFundMe page. 
Let's sell the chairs and raise money. Um, you know, we'll, we'll bring our own. Hey, some of you might bring recliners and then you'll be wrapped up in your blanket and go to sleep. No, I don't want that. Sorry, leaders, we're not selling these chairs. <laughs> what are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? What are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? And we start stressing. We start worrying. And we start trying to figure this out and that out and this out. We need to wait and just, I mean, we need to back up, take a breath and just say, open my eyes. Because there's a greater army than what's surrounding us. I mean, we need to be good stewards and we need to do what the Lord tells us to do and, 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 and make, follow those decisions and, and, and do, you know, follow in his footsteps. But we have to remember he's greater than what's surrounding us. And he hasn't brought us 50 plus years as a congregation to just say, you're done now. He hasn't given leadership a vision and a, a, of this community to just say, you're done now. He hasn't, he hasn't given us a vision of, of the ministries that can be taken, that can take place out of the office complex, down in the conference room, the training, the discipleship that can go on over there, that, to just say, you're done now, close the doors, goodbye. He's greater than all of that. His name is Jehovah Jireh. I am the Lord who provides. When I do what I know I should be doing, He will provide. Open my eyes, Lord, that I might see. Open my eyes that I might see. Oh, the story doesn't end there, though. Because once his eyes are opened, the Syrians start to come down and attack. And Elisha prays, Lord, shut their eyes. Wow. One man, George, shut the army's eyes. And God shut their eyes. They were blinded. You see, we have the authority through Jesus Christ to stand up to the enemy and say, shut your eyes. Lord, shut his eyes. He's shut his mouth. He's not going to devour me. Those people that say things about me, they're not going to devour me. Because I know who I am, and I know whose I am. I have been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. I am a child of His. I, 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 I am going to be, I, I have the riches, I have access to the riches of heaven. I, I, I have access to the power that raised Christ from the dead and it's living inside of me. The Spirit of God, the dunamis, the dynamite of God is living inside of me. And so I have authority to stand against the enemy in Jesus' name and bind him and, and because Scripture says whatever is bound on earth is bound in heaven. And I can stand against that enemy and I can bind him in the name of Jesus. Does it mean that, does it mean that I still don't have to go through that time? But I can say, shut his eyes. Shut their eyes. Shut their eyes. And the Lord did it. Oh, my word. I can't imagine being there and being that servant. What an attitude change he must have had that day. Comes out to get the newspaper. Oh, what are we going to do to? Oh, what is going on? Wow. Who is it I'm following here? Man, I don't want to mess with you, dude. 
It wasn't Elisha. It wasn't Elisha doing it in his own power. It wasn't some magic trick. Elisha relied on the power of God. And when he tapped into that power, things happened. Things took place. Obstacles were overcome. Mountains were moved. You know, Jesus said, faith the size of a mustard seed. Mountains were moved. So much so that Elisha took the leader of that Syrian army and led him into town. Into Samaria. Really? You know, when, when they came to get us last night, Andrew said, okay, here you go, and handed us blindfolds. I said, no, 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 no. And he brought us here the long way. Uh, he brought us here. And, and, but he led, Elisha led this vast army, one man, Vast, I get the picture. One man, vast army, huge army, who are blind, probably scared to death. I could see just a minute ago what happened. Wait a minute, I need to call my doctor and figure this out. And he led them into town. And the king of Israel said, ah, now I get to kill him. And Elisha said, no. Feed them. And send them on their way. Before he met the king of Israel, though, he prayed that their eyes would be opened again. And... It were amazing. Close my mind. Led them into town. And the king of Israel threw a feast and sent them on their way. Well now, is that something we would do? Your enemy is standing right there, ready to, you know, he's been led right to you. Are you going to feed them and send them on their way? Trials that we face. Trials that we have. How are we handling those? How are we dealing with those? Open our eyes. Realize the power that is around us. Realize that God has us in the palm of His hand. And walk in that victory, walk in that power, walk in that strength. So much so that you can lead your blind enemies into town. <laughs> Is that funny? <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. I don't need to defend myself. All I need to do is be obedient. And, and all I need to do is just follow Him and trust Him. Have faith. And know. Stand on the Word and know. Stand on on the fact that what he says in here, he's going to do. 
It may not be the way we want it, the way we desire it, but he's still going to do it because he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means the promises that were made then are for you today. The power that fell on the apostle on the disciples there in that upper room, that Holy Spirit power was not just a one day deal. That power is available for you today. The mind of Christ was not just for the Apostle Paul. The mind of Christ is for you today. The love of God was not just given to a select few in the Old Testament or the New Testament. That love reaches all the way down from Calvary's Hill to you today. Wherever you are, whatever you're going through, whatever's happening in your life, saved, not saved, His love is reaching to you today. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Show me. When we come to that point and we say that, He shows us. It may be just an inch in front of us, but He's still showing us. Show us. Open my eyes that I might see. Open my eyes that I might know. Open my eyes that I might experience you in all of your fullness. Is that you today? Do you need your eyes opened? Do you need to know a way? Doesn't seem, I mean, it seems hopeless, but there's no way out, there's no way through it. The army's too big. God, open my eyes today. That should be your prayer. And when you see his army, walk in victory facing the other army, knowing that you have the power of the Almighty behind you with you, fighting for you. Let's stand together.